What's going on guys, Pat Fantasia. Today I'm bringing you episode two of Unsigned Hype. On today's episode, we're gonna be featuring a band known as the Summer Floods. But before we get into that, we're gonna have a local spotlight segment featuring my man, Omar Samaha, and he's gonna be talking about gun violence prevention. So we're gonna jump right into that and I'll catch you guys in a minute. Get it right, get it hype. Peace. What's going on guys, this is Pat Fantasia and today we're doing a local spotlight with my man Omar Samaha and he's here to talk about gun violence prevention. So uh, why don't you just, you know, just jump into it, kind of what your organization does, how right. you got into it and all that stuff. All right. Well, I uh, started out in gun violence prevention after April 16th. Uh, my sister Rima was one of the victims of the Virginia Tech. And ever since then, I uh, just started learning more and more about what we could have done uh, as a as Virginia as a state and, and us as a country, what we could have done to prevent it, prevent April 16th from happening. What can we do to prevent these types of tragedies from occurring again? So after all the facts and details came out, we found out that the gunman at Virginia Tech should never have been able to purchase the guns he did. He bought two guns on two separate occasions, um, and he had actually been in front of a judge who had deemed him to be uh, dangerously mentally ill. And if that happens, uh, you actually lose your right to purchase guns. Well, his name was never submitted to the background check database that people have to go through when they buy a gun from the dealer, and so he was allowed to purchase those guns. Uh, if his name had been submitted, he would have been prevented from purchasing those guns. So that was one of the few things that um, we could have had in place at the time, which uh, could have helped prevent the tragedy from happening. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it, it's a topic that um, is somewhat controversial because it gets kind of pulled in different angles, uh, in different ways by the extremes. But if you really look at it, it's about uh, just enforcing laws that already exist. It's not about creating new laws. It's about just making sure we take uh, the people who are felons, criminals, domestic abusers, even people who are uh, potential terrorists, people on the terrorist watch list. Mm -hmm. um, it's about making sure that people like that aren't able to go and purchase guns. And, and by law in this country, they're not allowed to, but um, in many ways our background check system, which works well when it's updated with all the names of people who are prohibited from purchasing, but right now, we actually are missing millions of names in that database. And what I've been working on is trying to fix that database and make sure that it's running the way it should be. So it's not missing any names. Right, exactly. Um, so you recently did a, a segment with ABC. Yes. So do you just want to, you know, kind of talk about yeah. that? Uh, about a year after uh, April 16th, uh, I got invited by ABC 2020 to go undercover to a gun show in Richmond, Virginia and I went and I purchased 10 guns in one hour. Uh, no background check, no questions asked. I never even had to show my ID. Mm -hmm. And um, I bought, uh, my first purchase was an assault rifle. And uh, I even bought a handgun, which was the same type of gun used uh, to kill my sister and the 31 other victims. Uh, I actually purchased that gun in the parking lot of the gun show. Wow. So I really learned firsthand how there, this is what we call the gun show loophole. How easy it is. Right. Like that's that's crazy that you're right. just able to walk in there and just be able to purchase these firearms yeah. without you know the proper you know, license and, or. And we allow and we allow felons and and domestic abusers and people who are dangerously mentally ill, just like Cho, the gunman at Virginia Tech. We allow them to do that every day in this country, and so and and they could do it at gun show because at gun shows what what's going on is at the gun show that you have people who are selling uh, privately. So they're not doing it as a business. They're not a federally licensed dealer. So people in Virginia and, and many other states who own guns can go sell their guns to anyone else without a background check. And that happens at gun shows a lot, but it actually can happen anywhere. It can happen in the parking lot of a grocery store. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is make sure that we do a background check on every gun sale. And the way we do that is by passing new legislation, which is called the Fixed Gun Checks Act. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've been pushing really hard. Uh, a couple years after the gun show, I was invited by Mayors Against Illegal Guns to go drive around the country. And we went to over 56 cities in about four months. And we were uh, showing this legislation that it's called the Fixed Gun Checks Act. And what it would do is take all the names of uh, uh, the missing names that should be in the database and making sure that all of the states 
are putting those names into the database, and then we and make it mandatory that we do a background check for every gun sold on the place. Yes. So then you prevent those loopholes where you know someone right. purchases a firearm and they don't, you know, they shouldn't be purchasing a right. firearm. They're not the type of people that you know they're using it for like self protection. They're the type of people that they have risky behavior associated with them, which right. is known by the like right. known by they have people. a record. They have a record. They have a record of people, yeah. you know. And it's it's just it's not a good thing like that you know someone who could be potentially dangerous yeah. to other people around them that they can just be able to walk in you know and be able to purchase these firearms without the proper background check right and um, so you also so that that ties into like the gun check correct like that's right. kind of what you guys are pushing right the the fixed gun that, check yeah. fixed gun check where it's you know you get all these people's names on that database right. and you make sure that they're not you know. A liability by purchasing purchasing right. these firearms. Right. You have to make sure it's it's basically people who are prohibited by law. You have to you have to draw the distinction. This isn't about oh I think that person is dangerous. They shouldn't go buy a gun. This is like people have a record. Mm -hmm. They've been in front of a court criminal and, record. Yeah. Right. And they've been deemed by a judge to be a felon, a domestic abuser, or somebody who's dangerous and mentally ill, or even a terrorist. I mean, the and and when you don't have the background check working and you're not actually conducting background checks on all the gun sales, then you're leaving all these loopholes open for the yeah. next show it's or you know the up. next dangerous person to go and, and commit mass shootings or even just you know shoot someone on the side of the street. I mean there's so many wrong things that can happen when you have these loopholes. So we're just trying to close the loopholes and make sure we have a background check for every sale. I understand. So like I said this is a local spotlight um, and you know it pertains to you know the Virginia area. So you work in DC correct? Yeah, I live in Arlington, Virginia, um, and I work. I do a lot of work in D.C., but I also do a lot of work in Richmond. So I do stuff on the Virginia state level, and I do stuff on the national level as well. Where have you um, traveled around you know, the nation? Just so um, we did. We actually did a huge circle around the country. Mm -hmm. um, we went to over 25 states, uh, over 56 cities in four months. Um, we went uh, from D.C. Um, to New York to New Jersey, all the way across to L.A., and down to Tucson, Arizona, we had a nice event there with the survivors of the Tucson, Arizona shooting. And um, we actually went all the way back through Texas, down to Florida, and back up to the site. Is there any, um, like, uh, if people are trying to get more into, you know, yeah. this type of field of work, like, is there any type of website or, like, a place where they could contact you guys and try and get more involved? Yeah, we, uh, we actually have a huge presence on uh, Facebook, it's probably one of the easiest things. Um, you can do a simple Google search for fixed gun checks. It'll come up with a bunch of stuff. Our main website it, for the fixed gun checks is fixedgunchecks.org or .com, and you can go on there and you get a whole bunch of information. You actually, you actually can go on the website and see my tour and see where I went and people we interviewed along the way and how many people actually support this. Uh, about 86% of Americans support this. That's almost nine out of 10. Um, and even gun owners support this. NRA members, it's about 7 out of 10 NRA members support this. So you can go on fixgunchecks.org and you can see where we went across the country and uh, all the interviews we did and all the information and statistics you want and see where you can get involved. Um, and, then, and then you could also sign our petition there as well. If someone was looking to maybe get in contact with you personally, do you have like a Twitter or anything that people could yeah. follow you on? Yeah, my Twitter, my t sorry. My Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. Yep. My Twitter account is Omar Samaha. Uh, it's O M A R S A M A H A. Well, this has been a local spotlight segment. I just want to say thank you, Omar, Thanks, for coming out to the show and me. telling people about what you do in the field of, you know, gun checks and gun safety and prevention against gun violence. And uh, I think that's all for today. So thanks again, sure. and we'll catch you guys later. Peace. What's going on guys? This is episode two of Unsigned Hype and today I'm chilling with the band The Summer Floods. So to start it off, let's just go down the line. You guys introduce yourself and uh, state what you play. Hi, I'm Cooper Drummond. I play guitar. Matthew Harrison. I play bass. Rami Zabara. I sing and I play guitar. I'm Carl Walker. I play drums. Alright, word. So uh, how did you guys come up with the name The Summer Floods? Uh, <clears throat> actually, we went for like a month or two without a name, and we were trying to think of a name. And then um, last summer, I don't know if you guys remember, but there were these like massive storms, and like the whole area just like flash flooded. And their pool in the backyard, 
actually like overflowed and flooded so I, we thought it was like a very appropriate and relevant it clicked and we were like the summer floods that's yeah. what's up uh so how did you guys like come together as a band like did you guys first just start as a jam band or did you initially always start writing songs or like how did you guys go about well we uh we got rami last summer we'd been playing matt carl and i um for like a little bit before, um, for like maybe a year, yeah, yeah. and we, we were writing our own stuff, and then Rami came and Rami added a lot of stuff, new songs, and we've kind of just been working, we've always just been working on uh, writing our own material. Yeah, I met Cooper and Carl through Matt, um, I've known that for a few years now, <clears throat> so he just uh, called me up and said you should come play with us. If you guys had to put your music in a genre, what would you kind of, what, would, what genre would you place it into? We were, we were talking about this yesterday. We're, we're definitely rock. Definitely, that's our overarching. Umbrella, umbrella yeah, time. yeah. Um, there's dance elements into it. A lot of punk elements, I would say too. Um, yeah. Very high energy for yeah. a lot of the songs. It's very yeah. driving. It's like upbeat, happy punk. With dance. rock. With dance. Rock. Yeah. Yeah. It's really difficult. That that's a very hard question. Yeah. I mean, it's tough. It's tough to put your music into like yeah, one yeah. specific genre, but I think it's cool that you guys like try and incorporate a lot of different yeah. uh, musical elements just from like different genres. Because I mean, I think that makes for like a band that's you know a band that just like comes off as like you know someone that's entertaining and the the audience doesn't you know like lose interest immediately yeah. because yeah. you keep throwing them for a loop. Yeah. You don't hear the same know. song five times. Yeah. It's it's easier for us too because we all like similar music and different music so we get to bring stuff that you know maybe one of us wouldn't individually think of because we don't really think of something in that like genre or something and then we'll come together and throw it in our song and everyone will like mix all of their different influences together. I definitely hear that. So, uh, is there like, uh, do you guys have like a fan page or anything like that where uh, people that see the show, you know, if they want to reach you or like contact you, like, do you have any places they can go to do that? Yeah, definitely. Um, we have a Facebook page. Uh, it's just facebook.com, uh, facebook.com slash the summer floods, no spaces, no underscores. And then uh, we have a couple tracks online on soundcloud.com slash the summer floods. Um, so yeah, if you want to contact us, send us a message on Facebook. I think we have a Twitter. Find us on Facebook. We also have a Twitter. Follow us on yeah. Twitter. Twitter.com slash the summer floods. Follow us on Twitter. Sounds good. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys taking the time, you know, to do this show with us and uh, coming out here and uh, performing. Uh, but uh, that's uh, that's going to be wrapping it up for right now. So this is the summer floods, and uh, this is unsigned hype. Take it easy. Thank you guys for checking out this episode of Unsigned Hype. 
Shout out to the Summer Floods. Thank you for doing the interview with us and putting on a live crazy show. Also, shouts out to Omar Samaha for coming out and talking about gun violence prevention in our local spotlight. This has been episode two. I'm Pat Fantasia, and we'll catch you on episode three. Get it right, get it hype. Peace.